Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our weekly or bi-weekly sometimes machine learning seminar. Today, we'll have the pleasure to have a, a talk from uh, Aishvarya Krishnan. I hope I'm spelling properly, uh, yes. uh, pronouncing properly, uh, who is a last year master student in uh, Christoph Schommer group, if I'm correct. Yes. And uh, the title of the presentation uh, is uh, already visible uh, about chatbots. Uh, I'm really curious to, to hear the presentation. So uh, I should, the uh, virtual floor is yours. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Jakub, for the great introduction. Um, so I'm Aishwarya Krishnan. I'm doing my uh, master thesis at the University of Luxembourg under the guidance of uh, Professor uh, Christoph Schommer. And uh, uh, diving to the topic. So I, I'm actually doing um, my master thesis in design of a chatbot for ServiceNow knowledge base. And uh, this is the topic. So this is an industrial master thesis, um, which is in collaboration between uh, the university and a company, SES. SES is a society, European Day Satellite, and it's basically a satellite plus communication company in which there are 70 plus satellite launches in uh, two different orbits. And it provides uh, high performance video and uh, data solutions to users uh, all around the world and customers. And it's headquartered at uh, Luxembourg. So the motivation for my project is um, that um, we are uh, very familiar with a common ticketing tool, which is ServiceNow ticketing tool. And uh, in ServiceNow ticketing tool, uh, the main uh, motto of the tool is to launch the queries that you have. And um, the employee at the desk would uh, read the queries and depending on the uh, priority it has, they provide the solution. So, um, as you can see in the sh screenshot, I hope it's clear. Um, uh, there are different variables like color, location, category, uh, impact, urgency, priority, and another one, final field in which there is a description, which is actually the short description, uh, which says that the CPU utilization is so and so. And uh, uh, these are the words which are entered actually by the users uh, asking for something, the help that they need. And apart from that, there is one more field called as the description field. And uh, uh, the users, as I said, they give their input and ask the questions through these questions, to, through the fields that they have. And the employee will give the solutions to them uh, via the uh, fields like additional comments, which is visible only to the users, and the work notes, which are available to both the internal and the external users. So um, uh, to keep it very short and understanding, the question variable is actually the field that comprises of short description and description, whereas the um, answering system that we have is comprising of uh, the work notes and the additional comments. So uh, how, how is this going to help in the real time center? What's, what is the actual connection between the, um, the bot that we are going to uh, create and the uh, the service now ticketing tool. So let's see an example in which you, we are very familiar with the very task schedule jobs that we run in servers, right? So it it's a particular task in which you, uh, you can say that if, if a, an important server goes down, you please send me an alert. So you, the server like checks its uptime on and off, on and off. And when if the server is down, what it does is it just gives an alert to the ticketing tool, um, saying that uh, hey, I'm not uh, alive right now. So the uh, it it's it is like scheduled for every ten minutes, let's say, and it gives a for every ten minutes it gives a single alert. So for next ten minutes it give it gives another alert. So uh, let's say an employee is delayed to work by one hour. And uh, the, there are like six alerts, which are not actually uh, necessary. And uh, for instance, let's say, take the same example. And uh, uh, the employee has actually changed the, the status of the server into a status in which it, it is up. 
what will the employee at the other end know if it's up or down? He can log in into the server, but in order to give him a quick reply, what we can do is we can channel this uh, the update which is given by the employee and tell the other one that hey don't worry the server is up so it can automatically close the other six tickets in order to additionally add to this there are almost 7000 plus tickets developed only in I mean created by the users only in past six months so that's huge and it also comprises of frequent requests so the main motto is to concentrate more on frequent requests which are raised by the users and kind of give a machine learning technical solution that uh, no need to raise that much ticket and we can provide a solution and like you know by just chatting with the bot and um, the third one is the IT related issues uh, for example let's say that my laptop is locked and I'm not able to work I'm not even I'm not even open I'm able to open the laptop in order to uh, you know log in so what can I do? Uh, we have Teams application installed in the mobile phone. So you can chat with the bot and ask what I can do uh, within the management scenario. What I can do if the, if the uh, my laptop is locked? Is it within the management or I should? Uh, uh, and since it's uh, because of COVID-19, it has become a hybrid work environment. Or should I go to the company or is that a solution? So these kind of you know quick solutions can be provided to the users with the data that was already entered by the employee priorly. So um, a long story short, we can say that it's a single junction for all queries. So that's chatbot. So let's uh, let me explain the uh, workflow that uh, I have done so far. So first one, what I did is I accumulated the six months data, which is 7000 plus data, and I cleaned the data. So the first, uh, let's uh, get into the first block, which is the data cleaning. It has um, lot of uh, uh, stuff to be cleaned actually. So I used a, a regular expression library, which, you know, uh, removes all the unnecessary uh, noises, let's say, like the comma, the semicolon, the colon, the brackets, the curly ones, everything. And then you can, uh, then the important step next was uh, unifying the text in lowercase. If you enter a text, there is not only the, ex the there are different perspectives of each and every user, right? They they enter different variables, they put ahead different questions, they have their own linguistics to put ahead. And uh, in order to extract those, it's very necessary to make it very uniform. So I tried to unify all the text to lowercase and uh, followed by stop word removal. Stop words are actually, um, this is actually the, as shown on the slide, uh, I used uh, the natural language toolkit library, NLTK, which, uh, which has a set of corpus in which you can have the stop words like on, off, is, was, like all these words, which you can actually remove from your text, which is not of great importance to the machine itself, because we need to make sure that the machine understands what we are saying. And so, so uh, removing the stop words helps more or less to extract the keywords indirectly. So uh, as the first milestone of the project was to find the frequency of the words that are occurring. So what I did is um, I, I, I passed my data all through all the first three steps and uh, I used a counter library here in which it uh, extracted the frequent terms. And uh, the first term, which is for, let's take for instance, the word error. Error is the word which is occurring in the document and it's occurring for 60 times. So it just gives the number and based on the uh, requirement of the number, you can filter the number again. Like I need only words which are frequent, which are like, you know, um, more than 100 times. You can just put a frequency in the second parameter and uh, get the words which are more than 100 and kind of automate the bot for that. So uh, in at this point, what the main drawback that I felt uh, or that that I faced was uh, all the verbal words were actually included, like uh, work, view seeing these were the words which are like not much technical importance so what i did is i used a pen tree library which is available in the given link it, the link is available here it actually um separates the sentence into subject verb object and um, depending on the context of the sentence the verb will be removed from the sentence thereby i was able to obtain a uh, 100 frequent words which are uh, of which have more technical importance and uh, also was able to eliminate the verbal words. 
So the next step is, uh, as I told, the top 100 uh, frequent words were obtained. And then the user actually enters the question. So what the user actually does is he, let's say, um, the user is entering a question to the uh, to the system. Uh, let's keep it system for simple and then I go into what. So when the user enters the question, I'm going to um, say, for example, uh, uh, unable to log in in my laptop. So I'm saying that I'm not able to log in my laptop and it's going to just extract main information like login and laptop. So these are the two main words. Unable to in my is like, you know, these are kind of noises in the sentences which needs to be eliminated and make the system more efficient and make it understand what we are actually trying to say. And um, code again was implemented to extract the keyword and thereby restricting further search. So, um, so the word lap, login, laptop, all the sentences in the database are actually tokenized. So what uh, what is actually done is um, the word login and laptop was uh, extracted by using a library called as uh, Rapid Automatic Keyword Extraction, which is R-A-K-E, a uh, library which is available. And if you go into the library, the, there are different parameters, like I'm, I need to get the frequent word terms, or I need to get the terms which are of high importance. Like, um, sorry for going back in the slide. So, Here. I'm unable to log in in my laptop. See, so these are this is a sentence, and I'm going to kind of assign values to these words. I'm going to give more importance to laptop and login because after going through all these top words extraction and the prior cleaning that I have done, unifying the word, the unable will become in the word in the form of small letter, and then you kind of remove all the words like unable to in my and the login and laptop will be given a. a, a value of one, which is nothing but the uh, the frequent uh, density assigned to it. And you um, you kind of extract only these two words. This is just for a single example. Let's, uh, and if there is another example, like say my SAP and Azure is not working, then you can just extract SAP Azure working. Even the not will be removed by the stop words. So that was one of the main challenge, the, including the word not. Coming back to extracting the words, so uh, as I said, how the word login and laptop is taken with the help of RAKE, uh, the, all the sentences which are available in the database, that is all the six months data which is available in the database has to be tokenized. Um, tokenized in the sense you are breaking the sentences into each and every word and uh, then finally removing all the words. And so what I'm doing is all the sentences in the database like from one to 7,000, I'm going to split each and every sentence into separate uh, tokens and then match with laptop and login. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take the word laptop and see if it's going to match with each and every word, each and every tokens which is present in the sentences. And if it does match, I'm going to just uh, take it out. I'm going to just extract it and keep it. So in this way, I'm going to match the words, match my requirement with already prior words. And then after matching, I'm going to find it something which is called as the cosine similarity um, uh, between the question and the previous available data. And then finally consolidate the data. So uh, how does how is this actually working, finding the cosine similarity and storing the data? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the cosine similarity in the sense I'm going to check the word laptop login with the with the sentences that I have extracted earlier that already has laptop or login, not necessarily both, either laptop or login, because this, this might sound bizarre, but uh, what actually is happening is if you are just getting back the sentences from laptop, the word is matching more with the laptop is not uh, like a laptop is crashed. So in that case, the word crashed has been ignored. So that's the reason I'm including login also as an important criteria here. So uh, the cosine similarity between the input and the set of match sentences is found. And I'm going to append the data into a list. I'm going to keep all the data in the list and I'm going to co compare the cosine values. So once I compare the cosine values, I will get a value which is less than one because the highest value is one. And if there is a sentence which is with the exact matching, I'll be getting a value of 0 0.9 or approximately one. 
So in that case, I compared the cosine scores. And after that, after combining, com uh, comparing the cosine sco score, I'm going to extract the solution, the, solu the corresponding solution that the former employee gave for the question. After that, I'm going to dis uh, display the solution. So this is just a screenshot of um, my uh, cosine score, score similarity with the unable to log in in laptop. So unable E is removed because it's so E is one of the stop word which is available in the natural language uh, toolkit library. And the Q is nothing but the question that's that I received in the first the first sentence that matches my um, question. And the send the solution for this is password has been reset and sent to the user. There are a lot of errors as we see. And uh, when we are applying these kind of techniques in the real uh, real time scenario, that it's really challenging because there are a lot of libraries you need to import. And uh, there is a library for this, which is called as the text blog library, uh, T-E-X-T-B-L-O-B, which is used to correct the sentences. It provides you an automatic correction. So that can be applied to S underscore zero, and you can just tell that the password has to be reset. And um, the challenging step, which I face here uh, till date is, I'm not able to um, convert the past, uh, past form of the sentence into a present form. So that is, uh, I, I made few research on that, but it's, uh, I, I wasn't able to find anything uh, very much uh, similar to my challenge. So uh, as a continuation to the workflow, uh, yeah. So uh, the solution, the idea that I had is uh, to first clean the data, which which I told so till now. Uh, so cleaning the data, and then applying, giving the data as an input to either either one of the machine learning algorithms, because uh, for a data to be given as an input to a machine learning algorithm, it should be well cleaned, it should be well arranged. So uh, I tried with the BERT pre-trained model, uh, but unfortunately it isn't working till date and uh, I'm still trying. So what I did as an additional step in order to make the model work is I tried to paraphrase data because the model which the pre-trained model which I used is ha has, very, has fields, JSON fields like uh, questions, answers, and uh, stories. So th the input text which you're giving is in the form of stories. So, if, For example, there are multiple stories available in the Wikipedia and Book Corpus in Google. So what they do is they are training them based on that and questions are asked and the and text is trained in such a way that it gives the answers from the text itself. So it's, it's very easy. So um, very simple for, let's say, in a degree of uh, one, it's giving a very good response. But when the degree is getting complicated by by a factor of five or ten, the words aren't good enough. The model isn't good enough to retrieve the answer. So uh, what I did is I just tried to paraphrase it. Paraphrase in the sense I took the question, I took the answer, and tried to paraphrase it and give it to the model. And uh, yeah. I, I gave it to the model, but uh, it's working for some cases. But when I give the input in the form of, uh, when I give two inputs, let's say when it's, com when it's coming to this context of working, um, there are words like uh, laptop or Azure that occurs in multiple times, occurring multiple times. So the model is getting confused whether I should use the word laptop occurred in the first time or the second time. So these are the kinds of uh, issue that I'm facing right now. And uh, and apart from this, the I need to optimize the code because the code which I have used so far has a lot of for loops because there needs to be accurate matching between the words. So I cannot, I, can, I need to match each and every term exactly and properly and make sure that the cosine similarity score is more or less similar to each other to retrieve the correct information. And so I used for loops for multiple times followed by if loops uh, in order to remove the uh, pen tree uh, formats that I had earlier in order to remove the verbal words like seeing, working, etc. So I used for if loops there, but the uh, majority it's for loop so I just worked on the data and tr and ran few examples five to six examples and the memory consumption for two itself is going like 99 percentage and um, I had to reboot the kernel each and every time I start the start the to execute the code so at the moment it's the 
greatest challenge which I'm working. And uh, finally, it's nothing but then I'm going to relay the relay the complete information to the bot. That is having cleaned the data. I'm going to uh, check the cosine similarity, paraphrase it again, and then give it as a mo uh, input to the model. So it can be in the form of multi-passage models because multi-passage uh, models are uh, recently available in which you can give multiple passages for a single data and make the model analyze that which which one is more appropriate to the question that you're giving. Uh, and, uh, and the other one is to improvise the model itself. So these, uh, this is the work so far and uh, yeah. Thank you for listening and if there is any suggestions or questions, I'll, I'll really be happy to take. Thank you so much, Aishu, for, for your presentation and for Thank showing you. us uh, the details of your work. Thank you. Uh, I can see that there are some questions in the, in the chat already. Yeah. <clears throat> some detailed questions and some general yeah. work. Mm. I could see Hedgem hi there. Quick question. Yes. What is the link between satellite tech and chatbot? Ah, okay. Um but that's a great question. Yeah. This is not, <laughs> actually this is a question in not only in um terms of satellite tech, all the issues that come under, uh, you know, actually I'm into the department of uh, digital workplace communication in which uh, you can, you know, you have a lot of issues uh, coming up by the users. Say if you are not able to communicate with a particular uh, antenna, you can just give a question like at this, the so and so ID of the antenna isn't working. You need not, you know, uh, the main motto of this is if you have some issue, it might be of great priority to you, but the person who's sitting at the employee desk might have uh, other priority issues like, you know, uh, there is some, the launch pad isn't working well. So they might prioritize in a different way. And in case, whatever question you are giving as an input to the bot is available already in the database that is uh, that the employee has entered earlier, then it can just relay the answer to you, right? By, uh, by finding all the, uh, the similarities and the model learning. So that, I guess that's the link between the satellite tech and chatbot. If yeah. not but I think the, the question was uh, asked uh, five, Five five past ten, so it was before you started. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> answering this. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it was already answered in the in the presentation. Oh, okay. The, the, this link. Okay. Uh, but but there are some technical questions like. Yeah. Uh, I think some of them are were already. Answered, yeah. Like removal the of the words. How the verbs removal are done. Ah, okay. Uh, the verbs removal. I'll just share the link. Um, of the um, just a moment. Mm -hmm. What uh, you want to share the link? Yeah, I'll just library. Share. Yeah, okay. I'll I'll share the link. But maybe maybe a, a more general question is that uh, this is a sort of keyword based approach that you are applying here. Yeah. There is there is no too much con context or logic of the sentences that is analyzed before giving an answer. Yeah. So, so... I, I have actually used um, this link to um, to tag the descriptions. Um, so I basically tagged all the words, all the words occurring in the sentence. I tagged it and removed verbal words. For instance, you can see the, uh, the serial number 27 to 32 in which there are verbal words. So by doing so, I removed them. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you aware of any uh, libraries that are able to analyze sentences, Ex for instance, to extract subject and object and uh, main verb? Yeah, this is the actually the, the 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 link that I have uh, sent actually mm -hmm. gives you the um, the you know the segregation as you ask the subject, verb, and object. I see. And you can remove the verbs, like you can just apply. There's no dedicated library, I assume, mm -hmm. because uh, I, I did a couple of searches, but I might be wrong as well. And the thing is, you can apply an if loop there and just remove whatever word you're not find uh, matching. So it actually completely depends on the meaning of the sentence that you're giving as input to the system. 
I see. Yeah. And okay, so maybe I'm not sure if anybody raised their hand, but uh, you can switch off on your mic and ask questions. Oh, yeah. I think uh, Vu is uh, asking a good question. Okay, hello. Uh, hello. Th thank you for your presentation. And uh, I have some uh, not not really understanding where, when you try to put it uh, your training into the bird model. Mm -hmm. so you say you get some problems. So how you solve it uh, generally? <laughs> Not not too detailed. I don't understand. Uh, how I give the input to the model and uh, solve it? Yes, and I, because I thinking the bird model is already retrained, so it uh, already have some parameter already, right? Yeah, uh, actually, in the bird model, um, so there are a lot of pre-trained model, pre-trained mm -hmm. models, right? So yeah. cased, uncased. Uh, basic uh, base bird, large bird. So um, I, I am, uh, since I have completed two and a half months, there are three more months. So this is a juncture at which I'm jumping from, you know, the, like that uh, the algorithms like Naybase or SVM is no longer of use here and I'm just jumping into bird. So, uh, so, so far the technical details that I have bird, uh, I have bird, I can just say you. So uh, the bird, input which I'm using, uh, I mean, the pre-trained model which uses is the, uh, the basic uh, data frames are input, output, and the stories. So the stories are multiple Wikipedia stories, like, you know, uh, the basic one starting with the Vatican City and the second one, New York. I am not sure with the complete mm. paragraph, but uh, yeah. you can just find it in the uh, JSON file. I'll just share yeah. that as well. Mm. Uh, just a minute. I, yeah, but I can share it after yeah, email yeah, as later, well. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it's like the input and the output and the story. So what I'm going to do is uh, what not I'm it, the, what the pre-trained model has already done is it enters like the Vatican City was established in 1497. Let's say when was the pre Vatican City established? So the model is trained with, you know, the WH questions mm. and uh, the answers are given as well. So mm. if, if this is the question, that is a text ID for each and everything. So if this is the question, this is the answer. This is the question. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, because the model already retrained, mm -hmm. and then uh, you uh, tokenize your, your sentence, like you pick uh, some yep. Uh, yep. Yep. priority work and you inject in, into uh, the work model. Yes, and exactly. And as, as your explanation, the work model is already retrained based on some story. So yes. how can it, it help in your case? It's not that... helping. That's the reason. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay, okay. paraphrasing. Now... It's I, I just did paraphrasing in order to make sure that the model understands the language in which I'm inputting the data. But uh, the paraphrase is also not working. For instance, if I give two different contexts of sentences, like let's say my uh, Microsoft Azure is not working and my network is not working. And mm. if I give a question that my uh, Azure is not working for so and so reason, and if I ask question anything related to Azure, it's able to uh, intelligently retrieve the correct answer. But if I have two sentences in Azure and I'm able to give a question in Azure, it's getting confused and it's just uh, replying back that it's unable mm, to answer yeah, the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's that why my, uh, my confuse, um, confusions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, because I was just thinking it will, you know, like I cannot do quite great job with this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's my question. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the input. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank, thank you so much for this. Uh, Great presentation. By the way, I have two questions. Uh, one uh, is, uh, let's say, uh, specific. Another one is general, too general. So sure. the first one is, um, uh, I want to know how you evaluate, evaluate the system, in fact, and, and uh, from the user side, let's say, if he's satisfied or, in, and then in this doing that, maybe you can improve the system uh, because we don't see the evaluation, you know, okay, you, do, you are doing great things, but What's about the evaluation of the system itself? This is my first question. And second one is really general. I am mm -hmm. thinking about the innovation of this chatbot uh, product or system. Uh, according to you, what, then what is the future? If there is maybe so uh, no innovation yet or something like, uh, okay, you are studying what it is available and you are developing your own. 
from uh, using library but no, now next what is the maybe the limitation existing ones and what is the future for these chat box uh, topics topic here okay no, thank you uh, thank you for the question uh could you please come over the first question because um yeah uh, my first question is about the evalu evaluation of the system in fact evaluation in the sense you have any particular Va metric validation whether the the produced answers produced answers are mm, okay makes, for the yes. users are user for satisfied the system is really ah, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. i get yeah. the answer yeah, yes. sorry i get the question so um uh, there is um so um as i told i'm in a digital workplace team there is actually microsoft products which are available which uh, which has a field called as uh, which has an um you know the subdomain called as log analytics so um if I'm going to create a bot. I mean, I hopefully create a bot. And what happens is uh, if the solution was useful to the employee, I'm actually going uh, to have record of it, if it's useful or not. So it's a kind of uh, logical analysis or log, uh, log analytics, let's say. And I'm going to, not only that, not only the feedback given by the user will be recorded, but also the um, other, in, other like what all inf input he has given, what's the output that he got from the board, everything will be recorded in a, you know, a system and it will be analyzed whether it's actually making a big change in, in the wor business world or not. And uh, I hope that answered it. the question. And Great. yeah, yeah. Thank you. and the second one is, I'm sorry, I forgot the second one. Future, future work, future work, uh, like the challenges ahead uh, okay. and approaches. Okay, the challenges that I had so far is the um, using of giving the paraphrased input uh, to the bird model was of, of course a very challenging step which I'm facing right now and hopefully should uh, resolve it. Uh, and uh, the future which I see for this project is um, um, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure in uh, in terms of uh, how to be exact in this question. Um, the future can be like uh, you know, reduce manual work by uh, using the you know the techniques that we have, the machine learning techniques, and uh, this kind of reduces manual labor as well. And uh, when it comes to research perspective, which is very more interesting, when I got into this topic, is that. Uh, the word pre-trained model actually depends on the domain of the data that is being trained. So I feel the future should be uh, involved, that word model should be more specific towards the, the pre-trained data that is given. So there should be different categorizations for the pre-trained data because you your model will be confused else. So yeah, that, that needs to be an improvisation. Yes. Okay. Do you think just uh, as a follow up, do you think like uh, there is already some uh, existing system? Uh, is not a chat box uh, by text, yeah, by, text yeah. by voice or by video yeah. or combined? There is a system which uh, there are there are systems in which we uh, which I saw earlier like uh, you know movie reviews. Let's say movie reviews for using word model, where you can where the user enters that okay it it actually has. Uh, lot of data collected from the IMDB websites in which you the, the person who entered the comments and the sentiment analysis kind of sentiment analysis where you the user the words like the movie is good the movie is terrible these words are like you know are given a values are given a, the uh, are given a threshold values and are analyzed so the, this works for the for for like say um, uh, uh, in uh, zero or ones, but when there are multiple categorizations and and you're not sure what the categorization falls into, that that's a big challenge there. Mm. Any more question? Yep. Uh, yeah. I I have some questions. Thank you so much for the presentation. I don't see anything any lost with this stuff, but. Oh. Thank you, um, thank you. <laughs> no, very nice. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, I I couldn't understand how the the training part is done. Can you can you maybe repeat this uh, because I'm 
I, I didn't understand it and I may have some questions or, or maybe suggestions. Yeah, sure. That would be great. Uh, sorry, Professor, the, the part which you told, okay, could you just come over? I, maybe I don't. No, no, just, just, just simply how you frame. You, there are some sentences apparently that the model is trained on, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I'm interested in. How, how do you, can you tell us more about that part? Ah, okay. So the model, which uh, the BERT model, which is already pre-trained, has different segments. Like uh, there are various segments, like input, yeah. output. Sorry, the questions, the answers, and followed by uh, the story, which you are giving in as text. So these texts are actually um, the. Sorry, can I interrupt you? So yeah, question, please. question. Sorry, this is very interesting. I would really like to understand yeah, more yeah. in detail. Sure, sure. So qu question is like, uh, is your internet working? And answer is yes. Is that right? Or is the question like, uh, uh, was the process smooth today in using ServiceNow? And the answer is, it, it absolutely wasn't because I had five bugs and it crashed and none of the buttons were uh, active when I thought they should be active. And is that how, the, how what type of question can you, can you define a bit more how uh, complex okay. they are in terms of semantics? Um, okay. So mostly, uh, let's, let's think about the logical uh, thing, watch for why, for the reason why the user actually uses the chatbot. Obviously he comes to the chatbot because he has some problem. So he will say like, um, am I, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting correctly the uh, good example for that. Um, uh, let's say my uh, SAP account is not uh, working and it's my, maybe the SAP web page is not working. So what I can do is uh, I can just, uh, with the data already I had in the database, mm -hmm. I can see if any other user earlier has already has had the same issue that the user is facing. Yeah. And what I can do is in case of that, if it's already occurred for multiple users, I will just paraphrase the answers that earlier the employees gave in the correct form and give it to the user. If there is no solution, I will just say him the contact person that he has to see. So that there's, you know, even if okay. there's a new employee coming in, he doesn't know what to do. He can just go there and uh, ask the board what I can do. So it gives a solution. W would there be a way, so let's say I ask a question, but my question as always is ill-posed, right? I mean, when we, when we pose a question, even to a human being, yeah. We ask a question in our mind, we have an idea what we want to say, then our language abilities allow us to convey what we have to say in a certain way, which is already inferior to what we think. Yeah. Then the person sort of has to interpret that and <laughs> make it in their own language, an idea in their mind, and then act on that, so which means that there are four stages more or less, as, as I see yeah. it. Yeah. So could we find out in the question what may be uh, I'm going to use a very weird, I mean, not precise term, unclear. So what could be subject to interpretation? So for example, if we say the service does not work, mm -hmm. the service is not precise. So the first question you would like to ask back is which service uh, does not work? Is it one, two or three? And mm -hmm. then try to gradually refine the, the three so that yeah. at the end of the day, you actually understand the, the question that the guy is asking because probably most of the reasons why it won't work is because we don't understand the question. Do you know what people do yeah, for, for, yeah. for this? Is there a way that, that you are aware of? Maybe. Yep. Actually, there is. There are two types of uh, questions in the complete system that we already know. That's closed and open-ended questions. So there is an uh, uh, open-ended is like you have to give a very descriptive answer. Closed is like yes or no. So what we can uh, do is uh, for, that's actually an incredible input that I received from you today. Um, so the the input which the uh, you are just uh, telling me today, like scrutinize the question so that the bot actually understands what the user is trying to tell. Yeah. So try to yeah. figure out what is what is dubious about the question. What is what, what is not clear? I mean, what you know, what could okay. be what okay. could be subject to interpretation? Okay. So for instance, let's take the same example that you said. Uh, well, my service is not working. So my yes. service. When the word service comes up, you can the word the bot can do is search. The database again 
and the the word service so what you can do is any word mm. prior to a prior appended to service like let's say windows service okay. or microsoft service mm. or whatever service is available yeah. security service the uh, azure service is not working yeah. take all the services all the words which are appended be, be, yeah. before the words and yeah. uh, see what all what is find again the cosine similarity with the uh, thing and ask the sub in case yeah. Okay, I'm just to be clear. In a, when this uh, service uh, user is giving service, he actually should get back all the words prior to service. So let, just tell me which service. Exactly. Yeah. Ten mm -hmm. services. So yeah. Yeah. So then you're going to create, you're going to populate some database uh, mm -hmm. automatically based on on the answers that you get from the the real yes. people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then you 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 say this is a set of things which can be services. So you make an assumption. You say there is a connection between service and let's say a student uh, supervision service yeah. or a uh, restoration service or exactly. whatever it is service. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, another question, sorry, is about the memory of the, of the bot. Does, yeah. does it remember two sentences ago, three sentences, one sentence? Does it have, you know, does it have the ability to link up uh, the previous answer to the next answer that the user gives or that you give or the previous question to the next question? You see what I mean? So for, is, is there a non-local aspect? Because usually when you use these things, which is the reason why I guess nobody wants to use them, is because when you ask a question uh, <laughs> to the bot, they give you some random answer, which is not useful. So then you ask another question, which you try to relate to the first question, but the bot is not relating your question, your first two questions together yeah. at all. It's just answering independently of what you said before. Uh, yeah. if, there, if there were a memory effect, I think it would make these things much more much smarter actually yeah because maybe i could they could infer from the sequence of questions we ask in a certain order mm -hmm. what it is that we're trying to figure out uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm just thinking that yeah that's that's actually great and, because... yeah and and it will also reduce the memory we need not run over the complete data again ah, and okay. thereby consume i mean thereby reducing the consumption of memory yeah that's a great uh, idea yeah. but uh, unfortunately i didn't uh, implement it so till now okay. but yeah i will just include so that there is a link between so i'll just create a, a root node in which yeah. the 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 bot is able to recognize the word that the user is entering and yeah. once the root node is identified i'll make sure that the um uh, let's say the parent node the child nodes are related to them um hmm. in a kind of a decision tree i need to um, introduce another model like decision tree or random forest within the within the uh, text classification that I did in that case to reduce the memory consumption. Yeah. Yeah, that's great idea. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I stopped talking for a while. I have other questions that I need yeah. to others too. Uh, I can see that Hitcham asked some uh, oh, okay. questions in the chat. Uh, yeah, of it, of fact, just uh, as a follow up, uh, a uh, great remark by uh, uh, the colleague. Uh, so uh, recently, I believe uh, when I Google, I found something very similar what Stefan said, uh, using memory effect, uh, using an attention model, uh, based model that to, they have used this kind of uh, method or model, let's say, or approach recently <laughs> in multiple uh, uh, applications like text uh, ATL or text uh, translation, whatever, using mm -hmm. this memory effect, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can send you here a link. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah really I think yeah, it was, uh, this is really good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, I wasn't aware, but yeah, that's a great input again, thank you. Um, may I have a question uh, <clears throat> about, uh, let's say, a different situations that can happen let's say that there is a problem on the provider side let's mm -hmm. say there is a uh, break in the in some service mm -hmm. and uh, there let's say in the history in the past mm -hmm. there were many requests from the users that were related to that particular uh, situation okay. and, and or scenario and then you have them in your database for, for your training. Okay. But they are incidents. They they happened because some service broke down mm -hmm. and and the question the, the answers that were given were related to that particular situation. 
in, in, in the in this particular time. Okay. But if you let's say ask the same question in different in different circumstances, the answer proper answer could be very different. Yes. So do, do you take into account the current state of your um, service or services? Let's say that some 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 of the services ongoing some maintenance break, mm -hmm. and then then this, the answer should be, let's say for the question that my service doesn't work would be okay. We need to wait 15 minutes because the service is uh, undergoing some maintenance break. Okay. But in other circumstances, maybe the answer could be different. Like check your internet connection or whatever else. So did, did you take into account these uh, peculiarities of uh, that can happen on the service separate yeah. side? Yeah, exactly. Thank you for the question. Um, actually, there are uh, when when a service goes down, there are multiple inputs given by the employees itself. It might be for uh, yeah, it will of course be for the exact situation uh, that the user faced last time, and in order to check. Exam, uh, for exactly to be within the services uh, concept, what we can do is we can uh, relay. There should be, I mean, the uh, uh, how should I put it? If there is a situation like that, the bot should be able to communicate with the past database as well as the current situation. That that it is, it should ping the server with the user is telling whether it is alive or not, and if it is alive. It should uh, just reply back, check your internet connection. And if it is not alive, it can just go back to the database and see what the earlier employees have done. They have, whether they have asked to wait for 15 minutes or contact this team or another team. So yeah, we can, we, in that case, it has to have the connection between the uh, live data as well as the past one. Mm, I see. So. But, but let's say past data that, that, that in, in your database of for the training mm -hmm. do you have the link between the question answer answers uh, conversation yeah. and the state of the system yeah. all together or you have just a story and without any connection to the to the yeah. context? for the for the moment it's just the story but there mm -hmm. are plans in which uh, you can uh, you know connect it with the live data as well and okay. there is also another project which was sim which are more or less similar to this project which i'm doing which was to connect the uh, it it was just to a uh, relay kind we can say that relay the messages of the user to the uh, chatbot and the chatbot will uh, ask the sap server the sap application server which is available and uh, take the vendor list so mm -hmm. it was kind of a relay relay of messages between Two different points uh, with the center point as the chat board. Uh, and in that case, uh, we uh, we need not uh, get into the machine learning techniques itself. The relay would be enough to provide the answer. Hmm. But, that, but the, for the moment, there is no link between the uh, the live data and the and the question that the users ask. It's just between the past data. I see. Thank you. So I can see that there are some links in the in the chat. Yeah, there. I'm not sure how to save it. I, I think they they will disappear after we close the uh, the session in uh, Webex. Okay. So maybe I'm thinking how to deal with this. Um, maybe I should before you know switching off uh, try to copy. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, I'll just copy the links. I think uh, Jacob is not problem because she can type like in Google, uh, let's say chat box with uh, attention model or deep learning, or you can find a different uh, paper on that topic. Very mm -hmm. recent paper on the topic, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll... Uh... Yeah, exactly, that's what I was going to say. Uh, what Arnold just said is what I was going to suggest, yeah, so. Great. Thank you. But then, can I ask another question? So, you, when sure. you when you train your your thingy, uh, your, your your algorithm, and I don't know how to call it, you could uh, is it what you're doing that you're asking fake questions to real people, and you're seeing what they answer, and that's the way you train, or 
Are the pre-trained model with the bird? The pre-trained model that... Yeah, or, or, or whatever you call it, I don't know. Okay, okay. It actually, what it actually does is, uh, I am just searching for the link of which has the data. Just a minute, I can uh, share. But it's not, is it involving humans? Mm, uh, no. Okay. No, it's not involving humans. It's, it's just, just... That could be a way, right? Yeah. And for example, you know, when every time a, yeah, I, uh, someone from IT or whoever is managing the service thing mm -hmm. is, is being asked a question, they could perhaps already help the algorithm figure out the subcomponents of the question, maybe. Or, you know, so that then you, you can have some segregation and some compartmentalization of of the questions. So, for example, mm -hmm. you know, you could use the user mm -hmm. and the professional that's helping to to train the model every time the question is asked, right? Yeah. So that, for, uh, it, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, sorry. I mean, it could be like one more question, which would be annoying, but you know, no, no, no. Um, to, the, to, to the, you know, to the user, it could be annoying and to the IT specialist, it could be even more annoying because not only they have to answer the question, but also give some explanations how they answered the question. And on top of that, they know that this is going to put them out of a job. So maybe it's not very motivating, but, um, but maybe there is a way to, to do that stuff where the, the, the IT person gives one more layer of, you know, of understanding in the question. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that they they sort of pre-code it so that the, the algorithm later can understand it better i don't know how to say it but some sort of mapping yeah, the question okay um yeah that's that's actually uh that was actually the future plan in which whatever data the user is giving as an input and in case as uh, the log analytics part was told uh if the suggestion and the solutions provided was the board was was good enough, good enough, what we can do is we can just, you know, we can uh, store the log analytics, the logical sequence in which the bot tried to retrieve the answer for the user yeah. and um, make it as a, you know, the the, the root path when it comes mm. to answering mm. the user again, ask if there is any other user asking the question again. So the log analytics will play a very important mm. part in this step in recording the sequence of uh, searches that it made earlier for the other user. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. Thanks. Super interesting. Sorry to ask so many questions. No, that was uh, really interesting and uh, I learned a lot as well. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, Aishvarya, thank you so much for the great talk and uh, for the discussion and for, thank you to all thank the you. audience for the discussion. Thank you. Um, have, a, have a good day and a uh, good end of the week yeah. and let's stay in touch. I will keep you updated about uh, the incoming machine learning seminars. Sure. sure. Thank you so much. It was uh, super helpful and the questions were really uh, intuitive. Thank you so much.